This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN, a privacy focused, audited, and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. And by Stealth EX, an instant exchange where privacy is the top concern. Go to StealthEX.io to instantly exchange between Monero and 450 plus assets without having to create an account or register and with no limits. Making Stealth EX a simple way to purchase Monero with crypto anonymously. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever. By typing in Monero Talk Talk Crypto in your Monero.com or Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk, we were live at LibertyCon 2022. Douglas Tuman interviews Lynn Albrick, the mother of Ross Albrick, founder of Silk Road, the first open and free marketplace accepting crypto, who is currently facing double life sentence in prison. The two discuss how Ross pioneered the crypto-based online markets and provided the first real use case for Bitcoin, his intentions and ideals behind creating Silk Road, how the government admittingly wanted to make an example of Ross by giving him an unjustified sentence, what people can do to help his cause, the controversy around Monero, and much more. Monero Talk starts now. Okay, we are at LibertyCon in Miami, and I'm here with Lynn Albright, the mother of Ross Albright, who's currently serving, I believe, a, a double life sentence plus 40 years two centuries for creating what was essentially the first open and free marketplace uh, that used cryptocurrency yeah it was the first anything that used cryptocurrency really uh, that I know of um, put Bitcoin on the map Bitcoin was the only means of exchange used on the site so yeah he's considered a pioneer in that you know community uh, I know it's obviously to, to, to speak for Ross, but could you give us some insight into what was his intention with originally creating the Silk Road? Well, Ross is a real humanitarian and um, an idealist, and he thought that um, marketplaces should be not completely open, actually. there I mean, there were things that were prohibited on Silk Road because it was based on the non-aggression principle a voluntary interaction. So anything that involved force or harm to third party was not permitted. So for example, there was no child pornography or anything related to pedophilia allowed because the children would be the victim. Uh, same with uh, stolen property, um, violent services, and on and on. But drug, exchange of drugs was considered a personal choice and, so, and that the idea was that as long as you didn't hurt anybody else, you were free to exchange them. Um, it's not saying that drugs don't hurt people, but just that that choice was believed to be the you know what should be on the market, and um, so um, that's you know what was allowed, and um, yeah, so not just drugs, but lots of things, but um, anything that didn't hurt a third party. And obviously, the the government did, did did not like this, right? They 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 only saw the the negative side of of what this free marketplace offered. Completely ignored uh, the positives that that potentially come with it, and they gave him an absurd sentence, uh, completely out of balance with what the quote unquote crime was. Why do you think they came down so harshly? On, on Ross. Well, yeah, I mean, the government was concerned about the drugs, right? So um, the other aspects of it were not really considered. Um, but I think they came down so harshly because, well, I think Bitcoin played a role in that. And um, they wanted to make an example. I mean, they said that. So, um, you know, this was to prevent other sites. It didn't at all but um, that was a lot of it 
And things were new then. I mean, you know, Bitcoin was barely heard of. Um, cannabis was not legal in very many states at all. And um, so it was a completely different world. And um, so I think if Ross were on trial today, it would be a different jury. But, um, you know, at that time, Bitcoin was considered this scary thing. Now it's very mainstream. And, um, you know, yeah, and Ross broke the law. He, he committed crimes. So that's what their job is, that, to stop that. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans. And if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, gratuitous, and Monero. I know you, you know, you spoke today, a lot of people have been interviewing you. I wanted to talk to you most, most importantly, or first and foremost, for the reason of just being able to get the word out even more. You know, if you're in crypto, you should already be well aware of Ross Ulbricht. Uh, but if you're not, please make yourself aware. And uh, I want to give you the platform to tell my audience what they can do to essentially help the cause. Uh, he's facing this really un unjustified double life sentence. What can be done to, to help get him out? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's facing a death in prison sentence. That is, um, El Chapo got half the sentence. Let's just put it that way. It's, it's out of uh, bounds, really. And um, so we have a petition which is less than 2,000 signatures away from half a million. And uh, I'm please sign the petition, that's, that's one thing. Because I can take that petition to legislators and other influencers and say, hey, half a million people would like this done. This is important to them. And um, that makes a difference to have a public support. And um, that's one thing. Um, social media. You know, Ross has his own Twitter account. It's all his words. He's, he doesn't post it. He can't, but it's posted by a loved one. And um, you can get to know Ross there, and, you know, we, we want to promote that as well as the free Ross si uh, Twitter, which is free underscore Ross Twitter account, Instagram, free Ross Ulbricht, Facebook, the free Ross community page. All those things just amplify that, share that. Um, and any connections people have with, um, you know, influencers can be helpful because I'm needing to network and, and talk to people about um, getting the word to the President of the United States, which is not a small thing to do, to ask him to please correct this sentence, really, and give Ross, um, you know, relief here. So you need signatures to show that, you know, people really do care about this issue. I imagine you also need need money for the cause. Is it, is it possible to donate Bitcoin, to donate Monero? Yeah, I mean, we have a donation page that has many different uh, choices of cryptocurrency to donate. We are um, and less of a crunch that way because Ross uh, sold an NFT of his art recently, and that's helped a ton. And we he actually, we've given... Um, a chunk of it to charity to help other prisoners so but sure you know it's always lawyers are very expensive <laughs> and uh, lobbyists so um, yeah sure that's always good and um, but it's more uh, really honestly at this point it's really getting to the right people to get to the president to convince the president that this is the right thing to do Ross was really the first successful entrepreneur for Bitcoin, right? I mean, he, he figured out how to make Bitcoin useful, and he was the first one to figure out how to do that. Uh, this is Monero Talk Show. We talk about Monero. I personally started off as a BTC maximalist and made my way into Monero for what I saw as the flaws of Bitcoin because of its traceability and what I saw as, you know, leading to issues where governments can essentially mass surveil it. Do you have any opinion there? I know we, we spoke a little bit sidebar before this. You're actually aware of Monero. 
Do you have any opinion on the, the fact that what Monero is trying to do, which is being an untraceable version of Bitcoin? I don't think I'm really qualified to comment. Okay, no worries. Do you have any... That's true, but it is true that, um, that what, you know, Ross is a pioneer in Bitcoin and that it um, was the first proof of use that it, you know, of, of Bitcoin, which was the only cryptocurrency at the time. So, Do you have any advice or words or, you know, to those that are also, you know, entrepreneurs in the space that are working on cutting edge, potentially controversial things for their time, right? Especially, like I said, with Monero. There, there's a lot of controversy around it because it's untraceable. It's like cash. It could be used for good things. It could be used for bad things. Any advice to those people that are that are working on these pursuits out of a love for liberty, out of a love for improving the world? Any ad general advice for, for these people? Don't break the law. It's, it's a very heavy price to pay. There are ways to, um, you know, follow your principles and help the world without breaking the law. And I can tell you that Ross, if he had the chance, would have not broken the law. It's too heavy a price. And there's ways to work on it that stay within the confines of the law. Lynn. <laughs> that's a mom. But I, I, that is, that's the reality. Thank you so much. Uh, it breaks my heart whenever I hear whenever I hear you talk. Um, you know, I, th I think of my own mom and what, you know, what she would likely do. Uh, you know, so you're, it's inspiring to see what, what you're doing out here. Thank you. Thanks so much for your support. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.